Namo Amida Bu. A collection of passages on the true meaning of birth in the pure land of Amida Buddha. Part 4. Further passages which show the enlightened qualities of those born in the pure land of Amida and which cannot be found in the here and now samsaric bodies and minds of unenlightened followers. Quote, if they are born into the pure land, they are endowed with a superior wisdom and their clear power of mysterious communication reaches unto those who were formerly their benefactors and to those who were their acquaintances through many lives and generations. They can attract them freely. Endowed with a heavenly eye, they can see where they live and with their heavenly ear, they can hear their voice. Their wisdom of destiny enables them to remember the favours of their former benefactors. And with their insight into others' hearts, they understand their hearts. Their mysterious powers of communication enable them to go where they are. And by changing their form, they can adapt, them, adapt themselves to their needs and in various ways teach them and lead them in the way of salvation. And again, it is explained in the Biodico, where we read, quote, Those who were born in the pure land of the West know for themselves where they lived in their previous lives, what was their state, and by what causes they are now born into the pure land, since they know everything about the present state of every being that goes and comes to and from the eight directions and up and down. They understand what the various heavenly beings, birds, beasts and insects think in their minds and the language which they speak. End quote. Master Genshin, Oja Yoshu. Quote, what is called the pleasures of the first opening of the lotus is this. When a believer is born into the realm of the pure land, we speak of it as the time of the first opening of his lotus. All his pleasures are increased a hundred thousand times above what they were before. Such a one is like a blind man who has for the first time received his sight, or like a man from the country who has suddenly been transported to a palace. As he looks at his own body, his skin becomes radiant with golden rays. His clothes are made of natural treasures, gold rings, hair ornaments of beautiful feathers, a crown of gems, a necklace of most wonderful jewels, and such ornaments beyond description in their beauty cover his body. As he beholds the radiant of the Buddha, his eyes become purified, and he is able to see the multitudes that assemble in the next world and to hear the voice of the various lords. Everything of form and sound is mysterious and marvellous to him. When he looks up into the spacious sky, he beholds a wide radiance of sublimity, so glorious that heart and words cannot express it, and his eyes lose themselves in the path of clouds. The mysterious voice of the Honourable Law is heard, and it fills this land of treasures. The believers, while they were still in this evil world, could only read or hear about these things, but now they can see them for themselves. How great, then, must be their joy. End quote. Master Genshin, Oji Yoshu. Quote, the various beings of the pure land have all the five mysterious communications whose marvellous nature cannot be comprehended. They live a life of freedom according to their heart's desire. If, for example, they wish to look across the universe without taking a step, they can do so. If they wish to hear the voice of anyone in the universe, they can do so without moving from their seats. Not only this, but they can hear also the things of the infinite past as if they were happening today. They know the inmost thoughts of the beings of the six realms as if they were reflected in a mirror. They can go and come freely, as if all the lands of the Buddha in all the ten directions lay beneath their feet. They can do anything they please in the realm of infinite space and in the realm of endless time. The forms of beings in this present evil world are thirty-two in number, and who is there that can obtain even one of these? But as for the five mysterious communications, what kind of being is there that has attained even one? For beings in our world, it is impossible to see without sunlight or lamplight, and without moving, it is impossible to approach an object. We cannot see through even one sheet of paper. We know nothing of the things in the past. We know merely the things of the present moment. We are still confined to the cage and obstructed in every direction. But as for the beings in the pure land, there is not one which does not have this power of mysteriously transcending space and time. Even though for a period of 100 great kalpas, they have not planted the seed karma of the special characteristic forms 
and have not created the cause of the mysterious communications during the four meditations, they still have this power as a natural consequence of having been born into the pure land. How happy then they must be. End quote. Master Genshin, Oja Yosho. Quote, As they have the power to understand their own destinies, they talk to each other about their former lives, namely, as to what country they lived in, how their mind became enlightened by this and that scripture when they were seeking the way of the Buddha, how they kept this and that precept, and learned such and such teachings and thus developed the good root, and how they gave such and such alms. In this way they talk with one another about the virtues which they enjoyed, or they tell in detail the story from the beginning to end of how they came to be born into the Pure Land. End quote. Master Genshin. Oja Yosho. Quote, they will recite the entire canon in a moment and explain most perfectly the most profound passages. Thus their enjoyment continues without any interruption. Their place is a place of incorruption, and in this pure land of pleasure they abide forever and thus have all the time, for all time escaped from the terrors of the three realms and the eight difficulties. Life here is boundless, and their state is not subject to birth and death, nor do they endure the four sufferings of birth, old age, sickness and death, which characterize human life. Their body is as if of diamond, and so is not burned even though it is in fire. It does not become tarnished even though it is in the mud. Their heart is not stained with the dust of their environment. Their marvelous body of purity and strength is not affected by the sufferings of any and all sufferings combined. They are never injured, even though attacked by ten times ten thousand numberless warriors armed with spears and arrows. They are not burned, even though they may be in the midst of limitless flames. Nor are they drowned, though they are submerged in a fathomless ocean. Therefore, they can go freely even to the eight hot hells and the eight cold hells, in order to save their relatives from the three worlds and the six realms. There is nothing but suffering when we examine even the smallest part of our body, not to mention the larger parts. But when we have been born into this pure land, everything is like a diamond, changeless, permanent, without increase or decrease, wonderful, and therefore there is no such suffering as in our fleshly body. Yea, it is less than the finest particle of dust. End quote. Master Genshin, Oji Yoshu. Quote, the monks and laity of this latter age and the religious teachers of these times are floundering in concepts of self-nature and mind only, and they disparage the true realization of enlightenment in the Pure Land way. End quote. Shinran Shonen, Kaigo Shinsho, Chapter 3. Quote, it is stated in the collection of passages on the land of peace and bliss, Anlashi, the sutra on the Buddha contemplation Samadhi, says, Shakyamuni urged his father, the king, Practice the Nimbutsu Samadhi. His father, the king, asked the Buddha, Why do you not recommend to me, your disciple, the practice of meditating on the ultimate virtue of the Buddha's stage, which is identical with true suchness, ultimate reality, or the highest principle of emptiness? Shunyata. The Buddha answered his father, the king, The ultimate virtue of the Buddhas is the boundless and profoundly subtle state and is possessed of transcendent faculties and the wisdom of liberation. This is not a state fit to be practiced by ordinary people, so I urge you, the king, to practice the Nimbutsu Samadhi. His father, the king, asked the Buddha, What are the characteristics of the merit of the Nimbutsu? The Buddha replied to his father, the king, Suppose there is a forest of veranda trees, 40 yojana squares, and there is in it a single cow-headed sandalwood tree, whose roots and sprouts are still underground. The veranda forest is full of a foul smell, and completely devoid of pleasant scent. If someone bites a flower or fruit of the Aranda tree, he will become insane and die. Later, when the sandalwood spreads its roots and buds and is about to grow into a tree, it emits luxurious fragrance and finally transforms this forest into a sweet, sweet smelling one. Those who see this are wonderstruck. The Buddha said to his father, the king, the thought of the Nimbutsu that all sentient beings hold in birth and death is like this. If only one concentrates one thought on the Buddha without interruption, one will surely be born in the presence of the Buddha. Once this person attains birth in the pure land, he will transform all the evils into great compassion, just as the fragrant sandalwood tree transforms 
the Arida forest. Hence, the Aranda tree symbolizes the three poisons and the three hindrances within sentient beings and the innumerable grave karmic evils they commit. The sandalwood tree represents the thought of the Nembutsu and sentient beings, is about to grow into a tree, shows that if only sentient beings keep practicing the Nembutsu without interruption, the karmic cause of their birth in the pure land is accomplished. End quote. Quote, when ordinary beings reach the western land, their karmic evils, countless as particles from long past kalpas, will perish. Endowed with the six supernatural powers, they attain unrestricted freedom in action. Forever freed of old age and sickness, they are liberated from impermanence. End quote. The hymns of Fao Chao, based on the sutra in praise of the pure land, quoted by Shinran in his Kagyo Shinshu. Chapter 2. Quote, in the Western land, one advances in the way more quickly than in this Saha world, because that land is free of the five desires and adversaries. End quote. The hymns of Fao Chao, based on the Sutra on the Life of the Buddha, quoted by Shinran Shonen in his Kaigo Shinsho, Chapter 2. Foolish beings who have committed the ten evil acts and the five grave offences have been drowning in samsara for eternally long kalpas, covered with the dust of evil passions. When they reach Amida's land by calling his name even once, they will become one with the Dharma nature body. The hymns of, by Fao Chao, based on the Sutra of Contemplation of Amitayas, Contemplation Sutra, as quoted by Shinran Shonen in his Kai Gyo Shinsho, Chapter 2. Quote, it is stated in the teaching assembly of the Tathagata of Infinite Life, the people in the pure land are sages and the land is exquisite. End quote. Quote, it is also stated, in general, in order to make ordinary and inferior beings increase their desire for birth, one should reveal the excellent qualities of that land. Shinran Shonen, Kaigyo Shinsho, Chapter 2. Master Huan Shao says, The ways of destroying delusion and realizing true suchness in this world, which is based on one's self-power, is expounded in various Mahayana and Hinayana sutras. The way of realizing enlightenment after going to another land and hearing the Dharma there is necessarily dependent on the other power, and so birth in the pure land is taught. Shinran Shonen, Kaigo Shinsho, Chapter 2 Upon reaching the lotus store world, we will realize true suchness and attain the Dharma body. Then, playing in the forest of evil passions, we will display supernatural powers. Entering samsaric states, we will manifest accommodated and transformed bodies to save beings. Shinran Shonen, Hymns of the True Faith and Nambutsu. Kaigyo Shinsho, Chapter 2. Quote, Concerning birth in the Pure Land, the larger sutra says, they are all endowed with bodies of naturalness, emptiness, and infinity. The discourse on the pure land states, the hosts of sages in the likeness of pure flowers surrounding the Tathagata are born there, transformed from within the flower of enlightenment. Also, the commentary on Vasubandhu's discourse on the pure land says, they are so born by one and the same path of the Nembutsu, and not by other paths. Also, it is said, inconceivable birth. End quote. Shinran Shonen, Kaigo Shinsho, Chapter 5. Quote, when a person realizes the mind of non-discrimination, that attainment is the state of regarding each being as one's only child. This is none other than Buddha nature. We will awaken to it on reaching the land of peace. Tathagata is none other than Nirvana. Nirvana is called Buddha nature. Beyond our ability to attain it in the state of foolish beings, we will realize it on reaching the land of peace. End quote. Shinran Shonen, Hymns of the Pure Land, Jodo Wasan. Quote, If not for the Buddha's directing of virtue, how could we realize enlightenment in the Pure Land? End quote. Shinran Shonen, Hymns of the Dharma Ages, Koso Wasan. In the Essentials of Faith Alone, by Master Saikoku, it is said, quote, The land of bliss is the realm of Nirvana, the uncreated. End quote. Here is the comment of Shinran. Quote, the land of bliss is that pure land of happiness where there are always countless joys and never any suffering mingled with them. 
It is known as the land of peace. It was Master Tuan Luan who praised it and called it land of peace. Also, the treatise on the pure land describes it as the lotus repository world and as the uncreated. The realm of Nirvana refers to the place where one overturns the delusion of ignorance and realizes the supreme enlightenment. Realm means place. Know it as the place of attaining enlightenment. End quote. Shunran Shonen notes on essentials of faith alone. Commenting, commenting on the words of Honen, Namo Amida Butsu, as the act that leads to birth in the pure land, the Nambutsu is taken to be fundamental, Shinran said. Quote, know that these words proclaim the right cause of birth in the pure land of peace to be none other than the Nambutsu. Right cause is a seed for being born in the pure land and unfailingly attaining Buddhahood. End quote. Shinran Shonen notes on the inscriptions on sacred scrolls. Quote, and so as Shakyamuni has taught, at the very moment that we, possessed of ignorance and blind passions, are born into the pure land of peace, we attain the supreme fruit of Buddhahood. End quote. Shinran Shonen, Lamp for the Latter Ages, Letter 2. Response to an inquiry from the Nembutsu people of Kusama. Quote, Nirvana is perfect, perfect enlightenment. Guan Lan's commentary tells of a tree called Great Firmness. This tree lies buried underground for 100 years, but when it sends forth shoots, it grows 100 yards a day. Just as the tree spends 100 years underground, we abide in this Saha world in the stage of the truly settled. And just as it grows 100 yards in a single day, such is our attainment of Nirvana. End quote. Shinran Shun, Lamp for the Latter Ages, Letter 14. Quote, when a person has entered completely into the pure land of happiness, he or she immediately realizes the supreme nirvana. He realizes the supreme enlightenment. Although the terms differ, they both mean to realize the enlightenment of the Buddha, who is Dharma body, ultimate Dharmakaya. This is known as directing virtue for the sake of our, own, of our going forth in birth. End quote. Shinran Shonen, Lamp for the Latter Ages, Letter 21. Quote, Pure, wondrous, without bound, is Amida's land, and possessed of great adornments. The different virtues all reach fulfillment there. It excels all Buddha lands of the Ten Quarters. End quote. Shinran Shonen, Passages on the Pure Land Way. Quote, The first is karmic power, the land, has been fulfilled, by the karmic power of Dharmakara's great vow. The second is the power of the good of Amida, the perfectly enlightened Dharma king by which the land is embraced. End quote. Unlike our world, which appeared due to the collective karma of beings born here, the pure land is the effect of the karmic power of Dharmakara's great vow. Thus, the pure land is not here and now in this samsaric world. Quote, we necessarily attain birth in the land of happiness and thereupon realize that birth and death is itself great nirvana. This is the path of easy practice. It is termed other power. On reaching the land of happiness, necessarily by the spontaneous working of the vow, such a person immediately attains the eternal bliss of Dharma nature. End quote. Shinran Shonen, Hymns of the Two Gateways. Quote, Concerning the directing of virtue through the power of the primal vow, the Tathagata's directing of virtue has two aspects. The directing of virtue in the aspect of our going forth to the pure land, the directing of virtue in the aspect of our return to this world. End quote. Shinran Shonen, Passages on the Two Aspects of the Tathagata's Directing of Virtue. Quote, because of the true cause, Amida, Tathagata's directing of virtue for our going forth, we realize the enlightenment of a supreme nirvana. This is the true intent of the larger sutra. Hence, it is termed birth in accord with the larger sutra, and also birth that is inconceivable. End quote. Shinran Shonen, a collection of passages on the types of birth in the Pure Land Sutras. Quote, question, should we understand the state of being truly settled and that of Nirvana as one benefit or as two? Answer, the dimension of the awakening of the one thought moment of Shinjin is that of joining the company of those truly settled. This is the benefit we gain in the defiled world. Next, it should be understood that Nirvana is the benefit to be gained in the Pure Land. 
Hence, we should think of them as two benefits. End quote. Renio Shonen, Letters. Quote, the human realm is a place of uncertainty. The land of utmost bliss is one of eternity. Hence, we should not make our abode in the uncertain human realm, but rather aspire to birth in the eternal land of utmost bliss. In our tradition, therefore, the matter of faith is placed before all else. Unless we are fully aware of the reason for this, everything is meaningless. We must promptly undergo a decisive settling of faith, Anjin, and aspire to birth in the pure land. End quote. Renyo Shonen, Letters. Namo Amida Boo.